this is an update for Thursday, September 30th. In class today, we took notes on a couple of different subjects. So the first subject was integers. So we drew a number line and talked about opposites. So if I have a, let's say, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, the opposite of that is at negative four. So four is the opposite. of negative four. They're, this, they're an opposite distance from zero. So that's another thing we talked about is distance. So this distance from zero. So it goes one direction four and the other direction four and you get two opposite sides of zero. So a couple more examples. Uh, six and negative 6 are opposites, or negative 20 is the opposite of 20. So we, we had some examples, and in fact, in class, we said it out loud. So if you're watching this, trying to make up because uh, you missed in class, you might actually just say these. Just say 20 and negative 20 are opposites. Negative 5 and 5 are opposites. And just say that out loud. 10 and negative 10 are opposites. Negative 12 and 12. So opposites um, are across from zero. Then we talked about next about absolute value. So the absolute value, I'll draw another number line, is the distance from zero. So if I have zero right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, negative six. This distance does not have a direction. So that's 6, and this is also 6. So the absolute value looks like this. We write these two lines. That means the absolute value. That's what those lines mean, the absolute value of is the distance from zero. And it's just positive from zero. So the absolute value of negative six is equal to six. The absolute value of six, let's make this a little bit neater. The absolute value of six is equal to six. The absolute value of negative 12 is 12. The absolute value of 100 is 100. It's the distance from zero. And uh, we talked about if everyone lived maybe a mile or two from school, it doesn't really matter what direction. It's just one or two miles. That distance in a straight line is just a positive amount. And so we practice that. We practice saying the absolute value of negative 6 equals 6. The absolute value of 10 equals 10. Just saying it out loud, rehearsing it. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. So take a moment if you're watching this and just say that out loud so you hear it. Then we talked about how to order decimals. So ordering decimals, you just look at the place value. So we'll put a decimal in here, there's the tens place, or ones, tens, tenths, hundreds, thousands. And so we really pay attention to these place values. So if I want to compare, let's say, zero and five tenths to zero and six tenths, this six is bigger than this five, so five tenths is smaller than six tenths. If I change it up to four hundredths, and I want to compare that to two, or let's say 25 hundredths, then what I want to do is just look at the digits one at a time. Zero is a tie. Zero compared to two. Two is bigger than zero, and it's in the same place value, so we're going to say that 25 hundredths is bigger. 
So uh, we had a website. Uh, it's under um, week three resources. And there was three links there, and you could practice putting them in order. Here's a couple more. 205 thousandths, and we're going to compare that to 25 thousandths. So we don't really need to go into the hundreds or the thousands to compare this. All we have to do is look at this. Zero is a tie, and then this two is greater than this zero. So 205 thousandths is greater than 25 hundredths. We can even compare, let's say, six and two tenths to six and let's say 365 thousandths. Even if they have different place values, we are still going to do the same process where we're just going to look at the tenths. Those are t or the ones, those are tied. Tenths, three compared to two. We're done. We don't have to look at the rest of it. Six and two tenths is less than six and 365 thousandths. And then the last thing we did was talked about comparing fractions. And there's three different ways to compare fractions. One is if the denominators are the same. So we'll just say like denominators. So if we have 3 tenths and we're comparing it to 6 tenths, then we can really ignore the tenths. They're the same, so we can just compare the 3 and the 6. 3 is smaller than 6. Or 1 eighth compared to 3 eighths. 1 is smaller than 3. Or 5 twelfths compared to 1 twelfth. The 5 is greater than the 1. The twelfths are the same. They're the same size. So that is the easiest way to compare is if they have the same denominator. So notice here, we'll just highlight this real quick. The tens are the same, the eights are the same, the twelves are the same, so we can really ignore them. They don't factor into whether a fraction is bigger or smaller. The next thing we did was really use one half and compare all fractions to either less than half, equal to half, or greater than half. Everything sm smaller than half is smaller than everything greater than half. So 3 eighths, 3 is less than halfway to 8. 5 uh, sevenths, 5 is over halfway to 7. So this is greater. 3 eighths is less than 5 sevenths. 12 fourteenths is more than half. And 1 third is less than half. So 12 fourteenths is greater than 1 third. Uh, let's do one a little bit closer. We did this in class. 12 23rds compared to 12 25ths. So 12 23rds is just less than half, and 12 25ths is just, or excuse me, just over half, and 12 25ths is just less than half. So 12 23rds is greater than. And the reason I know that is if I double 12, I get 24. So I'm over halfway there. If I double 12, I get 24. I'm almost. I'm almost halfway there, but not quite. So that's just comparing to one half. And then the last way, way we just use calculator. So this is for help with IXL F5. Uh, actually, F6. F6. You have to, to order fractions. So we can just change them to a... Uh, Decimal using a calculator. So this would be 3 divided by 5. And this would, if we have 3 fifths and we want to compare it to, let's say, um, 2 tenths. So 5 divided by 3, that's 0 0.6. 2 divided by 10, that's 0 0.2. And now we're back to just being able to compare those two. 6 tenths is greater than 2 tenths. So on a calculator, here's what it looks like. 6 sevenths is 6 divided by 7. 8 thirteenths is 8 divided by 13. So just grab a calculator, divide, and then compare the decimals. Um, that is a recap for Thursday, September 30th.